Wow, there are some massive changes coming to old school RuneScape, and this is one of the most dramatic changes that we've seen in a while. The old school RuneScape team is making changes to a bunch of high-end PVM items which are affecting their stats, and most importantly to us, their price. Today, I'm going to walk through the blog and kind of give my thoughts on how I think the OSRS markets are going to react to these item changes, so be sure to drop a like if you do enjoy it, and let's take a quick look at the blog. Quick note before we get started, these are just my opinions, do not use any of my advice in this video to make investment decisions as they regard to old school RuneScape, as I'm not a professional. If you do invest, it is 100% at your own risk and you should not be influenced by anything that I am saying. In case you haven't heard about this update yet, Jagex recently asked players to take a survey regarding power creep in old school RuneScape and how players felt about it. Now this happened during one of their Q&A live streams that they have with the mod team, and the responses on this survey fuel the changes that the team wants to make. It is extremely important to note that these upcoming changes are not going to be pulled into the game, as Jagex thinks they qualify as integrity changes and do not deserve to be pulled. To kick it off, this first section about the survey says that the survey had 10,000 responses, which I think is actually a pretty sizable turnout. If I had to guess, that's about 10% of the active old school RuneScape player base, which is quite a good turnout for a survey that was never linked within the game. So that's awesome. Uh, good on the player base for that. They also show you the full survey results here on this page, but we're not going to dive too deep into it as I don't really think it's that important uh, for what we're focusing on here today. Let's get into this Shed No Tears section and what I think it means for the economy of Old School RuneScape. I uh, just wanted to touch on a few things here, nothing too major in this section though. So they basically wanted to change the stat requirements on a lot of these PVM related items, uh, which has actually caused a ton of hype in the markets for the stuff in the current moment right now. Regardless of if it actually helps or hurts the item at hand, we're seeing a lot of volatility around these items here. They're mostly PVM related changes and just like stat related changes, besides maybe the Nightmare Staff, uh, which is going up to 72 magic without an orb in it, and 82 magic requirement for the Nightmare Staff with an orb in it, which I do assume might affect a few pure accounts, but I would assume that any pure using the Nightmare Staff probably has 90 plus mage anyway. I don't think the stat changes really have a significant impact on the short-term demand for this item, or even the long-term demand for that matter. These seem more like quality of life changes and how it probably should have been the first time around, so I don't really see any major concerns here. Although there is a little bit of opportunity on this Dragon Hunter crossbow, but uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later when we talk about some of the items that are getting stat nerfs. We're going to get into the nerfing the nerfable section next, and in this section, I think it's a lot clearer to see how the old school RuneScape market will react to these stat changes, and we're going to get into it by talking about the face guard first. The face guard is in a really interesting situation because currently the face guard gives a plus 6 melee strength bonus, but the new proposed stat bonus for the face guard is a plus 5 melee strength bonus. This is a really interesting change because if this goes into the game in its current state, it will actually be in line with the Serpentine Helmet, and the Serpentine Helmet will actually be the new best in slot melee helmet like it was in the past. The reason this is is because the Serpentine Helmet actually gives better defensive bonuses than the Knee It's Not Face Guard, and if they have the same melee strength bonus, there's really no reason to use the Face Guard, and it sort of becomes a dead item. I see extremely heavy downside on the needs not face guard if the item goes into the game in this current state or its current proposed state because it basically will become a second hand item. It's not going to be the best in slot item anymore because that will be the serpentine helmet. Also, the Basculus Knights, even though they are reducing the stats that the Basculus Knights will have, still not a lot of people fight these. Some people do, especially on Iron Man accounts to try to get the face guard, but that's only because it's a best in slot item in its current state. In a future state of the item, it will no longer be a best in slot. So I do expect the Neon's not face guards to crash extremely, extremely hard 
if these new changes go into the game as is. Although, I could have sworn that Jagex specifically gave the face guard a plus 6 melee strength bonus when they were implementing the item into the game, so that it would not be on par with the Serpentine Helmet. I could be wrong, but that is how I'm remembering the situation when they were putting the quest into the game. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Lots of downside on the face guard, although if they don't put this change in, then I see some massive upside on the face guard because it's already crashed so much in price. The next item on the list is the Twisted Bow. Now don't get scared because I think the Twisted Bow nerfs are actually pretty insignificant. First of all, the team wants to change the current requirement of 75 range to a proposed requirement of 85 range for players, and I don't think that's really a big deal at all, it shouldn't really affect demand. On top of that as well though, they do want to change a current stat on the Twisted Bow from a plus 4 prayer bonus, which it currently gives, to a plus 0 prayer bonus. Now honestly, I didn't even know that the Twisted Bow gave a prayer bonus, and I don't see this as a significant nerf to the Twisted Bow at all. I mean, you're not using a Twisted Bow in a specific scenario to get that additional prayer bonus, so I don't see it having any significant impact on the price of the bow. That being said, other players might have different opinions, and it might get a little bit volatile price-wise for the Twisted Bow in the next upcoming days. This one I see as not an investment opportunity, but as a flipping opportunity. Should be a good item to flip over the next couple of weeks. Up next is the Dragonhide armor nerfs. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not surprised at all that these nerfs are coming into the game. The player base and the moderator team has wanted to nerf this stuff for quite some time, so I'm not surprised to see it here on this list. That being said, they are saying that they're going to nerf all of the Dragonhide sets, so not only the Black Dragonhide, uh, they're going to do Blue Dragonhide, Red Dragonhide, etc. And it's not extremely clear, but they say that these changes would apply to all tiers of the Dragonhide armor, so I'm assuming they will also apply to the God Dragonhide armor as well, although they probably won't take the prayer bonus off the God Dragonhide, as that wouldn't really make a lot of sense. As far as the Black Dragonhide and all the other Dragonhide that are not the Blessed version, I do not see any significant price movements in the future on any of the dr normal Dragonhide because it's already so close to ALK value that there's really not a lot of room for it to go lower because if it does, players will buy it up and they'll ALK it for profit. That being said, I do see some significant movements in a downward direction price-wise for the Blessed Dragonhide, and the reason that is, obviously, is if the stats are worse on the Blessed Dragonhide, then nobody's going to want to use it because it won't be like a viable option for Slayer or any other PVM-related activities. I don't even know if the Black Dragonhide will be viable for Wilderness Tanking anymore like it previously was. Really interesting here, uh, although that being said, I don't think it's going to affect price as much besides on the Blessed Dragonhide. Hide. Next we have the Din's Bulwark, which in my opinion is the most controversial nerf out of all the items. In the future state for the Din's Bulwark, they want to change it so it gives a negative 25% magic defense, and also reduce the melee bonuses by 25%, which is pretty significant. And they say that they want the Din's Bulwark to be a very high range defense item and a high melee defense item, but they don't want it to give good magic defense, which will correctly enforce the combat triangle. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I don't think that a two-handed tank shield should really have to enforce the combat triangle. It seems really dumb, considering it's a complete tank item, but regardless of that, if this change passes in the current state, it will be detrimental to the Dins Bulwark. I mean, this thing will be sub 1 mil guaranteed, probably less than 500k, because this really ruins the item. The item has zero PVM use, they say here that it has some limited PVM use, but if you could name one best in slot place where the Din's Bulwark is used, I'll literally give you a million GP because I can't think of any, and it's just really sad to see this. I mean, Jagex must hate the Din's Bulwark because they only want to nerf it, they don't want to give it any use in the game, it's just really sad to see. So, regardless of how I feel about it, I don't think this one has a really good outlook on it, especially with the current changes that are being proposed. The Toxic Blowpipe is up next. Now, this is a pretty significant nerf as well, and is definitely something that's going to be pretty detrimental to the economy. And we did touch on this one a bit earlier, but the Blowpipe is no longer going to be that substitute slash like budget item for range content like it once was, because these stat nerfs are pretty intense. 
this is going to shift some of the focus to the armadillo crossbow uh, with some focus going to the dragon hunter crossbow as well in the places where that thing is used so the armadillo crossbow dragon hunter crossbow are definitely now signified as these like best in slot items you have to have these to do certain bosses and you can't get by using a toxic blowpipe anymore as you can see, we're going from a attack bonus of 60 to an attack bonus of 30, which is pretty significant. A range strength bonus of 40 to 25, which is, uh, these are some pretty crazy nerfs. I mean, I did expect this eventually because, you know, Jagex in the community, again, they've been talking about this for quite some time, just like the dragon hide nerfs, but this is shocking to see. I mean, this basically makes the blowpipe uh, half as good as it once was, and it will definitely shift some focus towards the armadillo crossbow and the dragon hunter crossbow. So, in my opinion, the, the armadillo crossbow and the dragon hunter crossbow have tremendous upside. Even if they've gone up 2 to 3 mil, they could go up you know 10 20 mil at their current state it's gonna be a lot more demand for those armor crossbows and those dragon hunter crossbows now let's touch on the buffing the bad section of the post where jagex talks about the items they want to buff and we'll start with the dragon bone necklace and the bone crusher necklace they want to put the following changes into the necklaces here they want to reduce the prayer requirement from 80 to 70 I don't really see that being too significant, that's fine. Uh, removing a delay before the special effect activates, okay, that's fine as well, not too significant. But they did want to increase their base stats to make them similar to a glory, which I think is actually a bigger deal, because now people will actually consider if they want to get the effects from the Dragon Bone Necklace or the Bone Crusher Necklace when they are doing certain PVM content. And I think that's really interesting, but if I had to guess, this is a complete hype play, because the Dragon Bone Necklace and the Bone Crusher or excuse me, the Hydra Tails have already gone up significantly in price. They're almost worth a mil now each, and I would be shocked if this continued much further up in price because I think it's complete hype. People are getting excited because the necklace is getting changes. It's obvious to see that it's going to become a little bit better, but I don't actually think this really increases the demand at the end of the day for the item. Crystal Armor and Crystal Bow also getting a pretty significant buff. Right now in the game, the Crystal Armor has a special set effect where it will give a 3% damage boost and a 6% accuracy boost to the Crystal Bow, and if all the pieces are worn, the player will get a 15% damage boost and a 30% accuracy bonus. Now Jagex is looking to increase that damage boost from 15% to 20%. This is unfortunately similar to the situation on the Dragon Bow necklaces where I don't think this is as much of a hype play, but prices have already rocketed up from this coming into the game. I mean, I've already seen screenshots of the Crystal Armor Siege trading for about 15 million each, which is freaking insane. I would not be surprised to see these things go all the way up to like 25 mil for a Crystal Armor Seed before the hype dies down a bit, but I do think long term, the price for the Crystal Armor Seeds will sit a little bit higher. So I think the play for this one is to kind of let the hype die out a bit and see where that Crystal Armor Seed actually ends up price-wise, and then trying to invest into the item after uh, all the update hype dies down and try to get a good value deal on the Crystal Armor Seeds. The next section talks a little bit about some additional changes. Uh, you know, these things aren't really that significant. They're kind of talking about items that are not as important and kind of trade close to ALK value already. Jagex goes on to say that, that our feedback matters basically and that they, they do want to take feedback from the players and they don't want to blindly put all of this stuff in the game. So I would expect to see some very minor tweaks to some of this stuff uh, as we kind of discussed. but. I would be very careful though because, again, they're not pulling these changes, so all of these changes they want to make will happen in some way, shape, or form, although they probably will get a slight tweak. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I thought it would be really interesting for me to go through a complete update and give my feedback on how I think it will affect item prices and to show you some certain opportunities that you could maybe take advantage of with these updates. But anyway, if you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like and let me know in the comments if you agree with the Din's Bulwark changes because in my opinion, that is just a wild change and I have no idea what's going to happen to the item if that actually goes through. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.